Hello again, it's Ryan. On the bench today is a 128 that mostly works. This is actually a bit of a Frankenstein machine with components from several different 128s, but it works, uh, except for a few of the keys. Now the case is pretty ugly. Uh, it was badly yellowed, but with places that were the original color because they'd apparently been covered by overlays or something. I tried retro brighting, but the results were uneven because it started out so uneven. And generally, I'm not a fan of painting original cases, but I think I might make an exception for this one given the condition. But that's a project for another day. Today it's time to fix the keyboard. There are three keys that aren't working the way they should. The O key doesn't work at all. And the asterisk and shift lock keys are intermittent. When only one key doesn't work, you can be pretty sure that it's just something with that key. But when several keys don't work, then it's a good idea to start by seeing if there's anything common to all of them. Are they right next to each other, for instance, which might suggest that there's some kind of debris inside, or maybe something got spilled on it at some point. But even when the keys aren't close to each other at all, there might still be a common fault. This is the keyboard matrix from the 128 Programmer's Reference Guide. Each key essentially sits on two wires. When the computer detects that a circuit has been completed between the two wires, it knows which key was pressed. If we look toward the top left, for instance, we see that the 3 key sits on row 0, which is pin 12, and column 1, which is pin 19. So when you press the 3 key, it completes that circuit and the computer knows you've pressed the 3 key. If you also press the right shift key at row 4 and column 6, it knows that you want the pound sign instead of the number 3. So how does this help us? Well, if all of the misbehaving keys sat on the same row or column, that is, they shared part of a circuit, then we might have a bad trace on the board. One fault in one place causing multiple keys to not work. Since this keyboard has three keys not working, it's a good idea to start with that. But looking at the matrix, the O key is on row 6, column 4, the asterisk is on row 1, column 6, and the shift lock is in column 1 and row 7. No common circuits here, so it looks like we just have three keys with individual faults. And let's get this thing apart. I've already removed the screws from the bottom, so the top will pop right off. Unplug the LED connector, lay the top over, Pull the keyboard connector and unscrew the grounding wire. I usually put the screw back in place so I don't lose it. Now let's remove the keyboard from the case. Be careful here with the LED and this little plastic bracket thing. It's kind of a pain, so at one point I just hot glued the thing into the case. Okay, now we have to desolder these wires holding the locking keys in place. The key mechanisms have two little pins on them and the wires just wrap around the pins and are soldered in place. I'll desolder those with some solder wick. If you look carefully, you can see that someone tried this once before and they melted the plastic on the mechanisms. It's possible that the solder joint on the shift lock key just isn't very well done. Now that the solder is removed, I'll just gently lift off the wires. Need to melt a bit more solder here. The wick didn't get all of it. Now 
Now that those are off and I've removed all the little screws, I didn't bother showing that, the back will just lift off. One thing you have to watch out for with these keyboards is there's a small spring in here that's used for grounding and it's really easy to lose. Now the spring is supposed to sit in this circular opening just above the numeric keypad and it makes contact on this circular pad on the circuit board. This keyboard has lost that spring apparently. The spring helps ground the static charges, so even though the keyboard will work without it, you risk frying the CIA if it's not there. And luckily I do have a replacement from another keyboard. You can see how tiny this is. So it just sits in here like so, and just be careful not to lose it. I have no idea where you'd get a replacement spring from. I'm going to start just by cleaning the contacts on the keys. Here's the circuit board, and you can see the two pads that the key presses down on. I'm going to clean those two carefully, though, because I don't want to remove that conductive surface. Looks like there are some scratches there. I hope that doesn't end up being the problem. There is conductive paint that you can get, but from what I've heard, it's not all that reliable as a long-term fix. Taking a closer look here at the pins on the shift lock mechanism, they look a bit dirty. Looks like there's still some solder on there, so I'll get that off first. They still look like there's a bit of corrosion or something on there, so I'm going to clean them up a bit with some fine grain sandpaper, just very lightly working on them just to remove anything on the surface. I just want to get a clean surface for the wires to solder to. And now a bit of cleaning with isopropyl alcohol. And it looks to be in good shape. Well, as good as it can be. You can see here where it looks like someone tried to take this apart before and managed to melt the plastic housings of the key mechanisms with their soldering iron. The damage seems to be mostly cosmetic though. It doesn't seem deep enough to harm the mechanism. I took the spring out while I was cleaning, so I'll put that back in and carefully lay the board back into place and reattach everything. Let's give it a try. And the O key still doesn't work. The asterisk seems okay though.
and the shift lock seems to be working consistently also. So two-thirds of a win. Okay, so let's think. We know the problem with the O key is not on the circuit board, or other keys would be acting up too. We know it's not just dirty because we just cleaned it. So the next possibility is a loss of conductivity on the key itself. Let's take a look at these key stems from another 128 keyboard. The plastic stems holds this rubber conductive part that's on the upper right here. Now the yellow part of that holds it onto the stem and the black part is conductive. When the key is pressed, this is what makes the electrical connection between the two pads on the circuit board. We can test to see if the rubber pad is good. I have my multimeter here set to 2000 ohms. If the pad is good, the resistance should be less than 1000 ohms, according to Ray Carlson. Let's test the space bar pad here to see what we get. Okay, that's fine. Another key. Good. Now let me get in here to the O key without blocking the camera. Nothing. Now this key is fine, but nothing on the O. So clearly I've got a bad non-conducting keypad. All right, let's get that stem out. I'll pull off the key cap in the spring. And here's the offender. Now here's a broken stem from another 128 keyboard. Before I pull this rubber piece off, I'm gonna test it to make sure it's good. And it should be fine. Resistance is a little higher than most of the other ones on the keyboard, but shouldn't be a problem. So just carefully twist and pull this piece out. Let's get rid of the bad one. And now just fit that back in. I'm sorry you can't see this well. I didn't realize that I was out of frame. It's pretty obvious how it fits in though. And now just put it all back together. And it works. One more keyboard back to life. Thanks for watching.